Next, we have dynamic net. Now, in dynamic net, the concept is almost uh, the same. Again, you have uh, your local network on the left side, and you have the internet on the right side. And uh, here on your local network, you have private addresses. But the difference with uh, static net is this one. For example, when this computer from here wants to send the packet out to, for example, a server, I'll put a server here. Let's say this is a server outside, and the address of this server is this one, 172.32.43. When a computer request uh, sends a packet out, the packet comes, the source address is 192.168.1.1. When the packet comes to the router, the router has a pool of public IP addresses. Here you can uh, you can you have to configure a pool. For example, your organization has bought so many uh, public IP addresses. In this case, you see we have three different uh, public IP addresses. Now you can have more or less. So you can define a pool here, and this pool will be used by the router. Meaning, when a computer sends a packet out, comes to the router, the router looks at the pool. It takes one address from the pool and assign it to that computer, to the packet that comes from the computer. So in this case, this packet will be converted to this one. Source address will change to 200.100.10.11. This 11 has come from our pool. And it goes out and the story the same as static net. When the server, this server receives the packet, the server looks at the packet, uh, okay, it will be, looks at the packet and sees that this destination address is itself and the source address is this computer. So when it wants to reply back, the source will be the address of the server and the uh, public IP address that we have here will be the destination. So the packet comes all the way back to the router. Again, the router will have the same routing table, uh, sorry, NAT table. In that NAT table, it registers what IP address for inside and what IP address for outside. Exactly the same as the one that we had for the NAT. So the same IP address, uh, same NAT table, sorry, will be here for dynamic NAT as well. Now, when a second computer refers to the uh, router and wants to send the packet out, let me put this out. When a second computer requests to send the packet out, again the router will check this pool and assigns another address to that computer and the computer goes out. Third computer, in this case I have a pool of three addresses. So when the third computer comes, again the, the router looks at the pool, picks one address, assigns it to that computer as a source address and send the packet out. When the packet comes back, again, the same story. The address will be changed when the, uh, by router when it looks at the uh, NAT table. Now, in this dynamic NAT, if, for example, you have a fourth computer here that wants to go out and get access to the NAT, it sends a packet to the router. The router refers to the pool. In this case, the router has already assigned all these three addresses to these three computers. So there is no more public address in this pool. So when this computer refers to the router and router cannot find any address here, this computer cannot go out. The router doesn't have any address to assign to that. So this computer has to wait here for these three other computers so that one of them finishes this job with the internet and then returns back the address to this pool and then the router assigns that address to the fourth computer so that this one can go out. Now what's the use of this type of NAT? Uh, this can be used for example in an organization that they really don't need internet for everyone in the organization. For example here, one computer wants to get access to the net for a while. They don't really need to have the internet 24 hours. So, uh, for example, this computer needs to get access to a share file. So, it goes online, it gets the file downloaded, and finish 
that's all that this computer needs to uh, do with the internet so if the company doesn't need that much of internet for everyone so they can configure a dynamic net uh, then everyone gets access to the net for a while then they finish their job they release the address and the next one can get access to that uh, address the third type of NAT that we have is overloading or NAT with PAT. In, uh, this one uh, actually is the most popular one and it's the most used one. In this type of NAT, again, I have the same local LAN on the left side of the, uh, this picture and on the right side you see that I have the internet. So when someone from the inside, a client from the inside wants to go out Again, it sends the packet to the router. In this case, we, did, we don't need to have a pool of addresses or we don't need to have uh, so many public addresses to assign to everyone uh, like static address or we don't need to have a pool like dynamic uh, so that everyone gets an IP address from the pool. Here, even we can have just one public IP address. As you can see that here, I have 200.100.10.10. Uh, this one, uh, I think by mistake I put 12 here. This one can be 10 and 13 again, it can be 10. So all of them can be 200, 100, 10.10, 10.10, 10.10. So 10.10 can be assigned to everyone. So when the packet comes from the inside, the router looks at the packet, it says 200, 100, uh, uh, sorry, it says 192.168.1.1. Uh, so I'm going to assign 200.100.10.10. When the other one comes from 192.168.1.2, the same address will be assigned to that, meaning 200.100.10.10. The same thing for the third one, and the same thing for the fourth one, 100 one. Hundred thousands of computers can use the same address to go out. But how can a router distinguish between these computers when it sends the packet out and it assigns the same address to everyone. When the response comes back, how does the router know which address, which packet belongs to which computer? That's where the port comes in. In dynamic NAT or in NAT with uh, uh, overloading or NAT with PAT, we use the concept of port. For example, when a computer sends a packet out, as you know, all, all uh, computers uh, use port to send something out. We use uh, ports, uh, there are, there are 65,536, uh, 35 ports from 0 to uh, uh, 65,535, meaning 65,536 uh, ports are available. From port 1 to uh, 1024 is already reserved, and after that we have some registered port, and from 49,000 onward, I don't remember exactly uh, the port number, uh, the ports are available till uh, 65,535. So every computer assigns a port to a packet when the packet goes out. Now, that port can be used for the router as well. For example, here, PC1 sends a packet out. The source address is 192.168.1.1. The port is, in this case, 201. When the packet goes to the router, the router assigns this address 200.100.1.10 and port 201. Then inside the night, uh, NAT table, the router registers 192.168.1.1 on port 201 has been assigned the address of 200.100.10.10 on port 201. If another computer like 192 client like 192.168.1.2 sends a request to the router to go out, the router will assign the same IP address but with different port and it registers it here. For example, uh, let me write it here. Remove this. So in this case for example, 192.168.1.1 on port, uh, let's say, 202 sends a packet out. Then the router assigns 200.100.10.10 on port 202 to that computer. The third one, 
192.168.1.1 on port 203, sends a request. The router assigns the same address on port 203. So in this way, the router can uh, distinguish between different uh, computers, different PCs, while it assigns the same address to that. Now, the router really doesn't care how many connections come, uh, come from each computer. For example, the first client can send uh, tens or 10 or 20 uh, connections at the same time to the router. The router assigns the same address to that computer, but with different ports. So if a request comes from the same computer, a request or hundreds of requests, the router assigns the same address with different ports. And if the request comes from so many computers, again, the router will assign the same IP address with different ports. Now, what will happen if, for example, this computer sends a request out on port 201? So you see, both computers are sending a request out on port 201. So how's going to router choose another port, a port similar to this, for this computer? Basically, the router doesn't choose the same port. If that port is available, the router will assign it to that computer. In this case, this port 201 is already assigned to this computer. So when a request comes from this, uh, another IP address, but the same port, the router assigns the same IP address, as you can see here, but it chooses the next available port. So it assigns another port. And even if this computer sends the request out from port 201, the router will assign the same address and chooses the next available port. So in this way, the computer, uh, the router, assigns the same address to all these computers. Basically, we are using one address and we overload that address with different ports. So when a response, for example, if a request comes out from this computer to port 80, for example, here is a request to get access to uh, a first page of a web page, I don't know, just something like that, uh, the computer uh, the router will assign changes the address. It goes out, but the destination port and the address are the same. And when the response comes back from that server, the response will be 7230243 on port 80 as source address and port. And the destination will be 200.100.10.10 on port 201, for example. When this packet goes back to the router, the router looks at the table that it has and it says 200.100.10.10 on port 201. It is the address of 192.168.1.1 on port 201 and sends it back to that computer. So that's the, dif uh, that's the difference between different types of NAT that we have.